In today's video, we're talking about the new release of DaVinci Resolve, version 18.5. This version just came out and there's already been a ton of discussion and exploration of all of the new features within it. But I'm gonna be honest with you, it kind of takes a lot for me to get excited about a new release of a piece of software. In particular, it takes the addition of a feature or a tool that I feel like expands creative possibility for me as a colorist, rather than simply making a bug fix or a workflow upgrade or something along those lines. Those things matter, it's just that I don't necessarily wake up in the morning excited about them, if that makes sense. So today, instead of walking you through all of the new features in Resolve 18.5, I'm going to show you the one feature that I think shows the most creative potential, the one feature that I am going to immediately start incorporating into my color grade. Before we dive into Resolve, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to this channel yet, make sure that you do. I put out two new videos every single week on color grading here inside of Resolve, and we do a live session on Friday mornings called Grade School, where you can come in and ask any question that you like about the subjects we've been exploring that week. So lots of fun stuff that you don't want to miss here on the channel. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you turn on your notifications. Okay, let's take a look here inside of Resolve 18.5 and get a look at this awesome new feature that I want to share with you guys. All right, so right now I've got no grading going on whatsoever. I've just set up some color management, set up my template node graph like I always do, but I haven't done any grading as of yet. And before I show you this new feature, what I wanna show you is here inside of my ratio node. I wanna show you something that is a reality for any of us who go in and adjust contrast in our image. And that's really all of us, isn't it? What kind of colorist would never want to adjust contrast in their image? Now, here inside of this ratio node where I am explicitly adjusting my contrast ratio, I could choose all kinds of different tools. I might use my lift and my gain. I might use something fancy in my HDR wheels. I might use my custom curves, but my go-to tool of choice is going to be contrast pivot. So let's just add some contrast into this image like so. And let's go kind of far just for the sake of example, okay? Now, I want you to take a look at my vector scope down here in the lower right. When I turn this node off, and then on. So I'm indeed increasing my contrast ratio, right? Like by quite a bit, this is a very contrasty image now. But I want you to look at the vector scope and notice that my colors, my saturations have really exploded out at the same time, right? That's something that I don't always like and that I've never been able to find a good fix for within the native tool set of DaVinci Resolve. And this is something that this new feature can solve for me among many other interesting possibilities. So drum roll, please. Let's take a look at this cool new feature that I'm talking about. If I right click on this node here, all the way down here at the bottom, I have a new option for composite mode. Now, if that term sounds familiar to you, it's not new to Resolve. It's just that prior to Resolve 18.5, if you wanted to change the composite mode of a node inside of Resolve, you needed to create a layer mixer node and layer two separate nodes together in order to get that change in composite mode. Now it's available right here within the node and I can change the way that this ratio node relates to the other nodes in the node graph, the way that the operation I'm performing interacts with those other nodes simply by right clicking and going to my composite mode. Now. There's all kinds of possibilities in terms of what you can do with these composite modes. This is something I've been jealous about uh, with my uh, colorist friends who operate on base light for years because they've had this ability for a long time. And I've always wanted to be able to just easily flip between composite modes and see if I can come up with something interesting when I do that. But in this case, I've got a specific idea here. I'm gonna go to my composite mode and I'm gonna select luminosity. Now watch what happens to my image and to my vector scope when I do this. Take a look at that. Now when I go off and then on, my vector scope is barely moving, right? My saturations, the sort of outer boundaries of my colors are not moving at all. And again, I made a pretty extreme adjustment here, probably more extreme of an adjustment than I would really make when color grading, but the type of saturation preserving uh, contrast adjustment that you see me making now is something that I am often looking for when I'm color grading. So that's just one of many examples of the kind of cool stuff that we can do with a blending mode. We can change the way the things we are doing within a node interact with the rest of the node tree. I wanna show you another really cool example of the way we can use this feature here within Resolve. 
So let's leave this contrast ratio a little bit dialed in or, or cranked up uh, around here. And let's now go over to the timeline section of my node graph and do something that I would normally do right at the beginning of any color grade, which is to apply an overall look to my image. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is go to my LUTs folder and I'm going to go to my CKC PFE subfolder and look at my 2383 DWG to DWG LUT here. This is a 2383, a Kodak uh, 2383 film print emulation that I make available to you guys for free. I'll leave a link to it here in the description for this video. And I'm going to go ahead and apply it to this image. Now, that went from a pretty contrasty image to a very contrasty image, right? So what happens if I were to say, well, I really like the color remapping that I'm seeing in this image. Like, I love the way that this red patch in the color chart is dropping in uh, and getting kind of darker, right? And I like the way that this yellow patch is getting warmer than it was before, but that extra like hit of contrast is a little bit much for me. What can I do about that? Well, one thing that we can do now is we can right click on this node and we can go to our composite mode. And this time, instead of selecting luminosity, we can select color. Check out what happens when we do that. Now we are only getting the color character of this LUT imparted onto our image. So that's just another simple example of the kind of cool stuff that you can do when you start thinking about composite modes and experimenting with them. And what I love about this feature is not that it's brand new. Like I said, we could have done this before with a layer mixer, but what's cool here is that we can audition this on the fly at any time with any adjustment without having to add additional nodes. We can simply right click directly on the node, go to our composite mode and try one out, see what happens. So I want to encourage you guys to experiment with this and to use this as a sort of degree of freedom, a thing that you can play with when you are color grading. Like I said, it's something I've been jealous uh, of my base light colorist friends with for years because it's the thing many base light colorists employ in their color grading practice to expand their creativity, to look at different creative options, to find interesting looks without necessarily knowing what something's going to do. But then they go, ooh, that's kind of interesting. And now you've got a new direction to play around with. So I think that's exactly what this composite mode sort of contextual menu offers to us is the ability to quickly flip through different ways of applying the same adjustments within a node and get a look at the different visual results that come about when we do that and uh, really expand our palette and expand the possibility of what we can do creatively when we are color grading. So like I said, this is the number one thing that I'm going to immediately begin incorporating into my color grades just to play around with the composite mode. And these two examples are ones specifically that I'm going to be using uh, near term because they're so useful. That happens all the time when I have a LUT and I only want to use the color component of it, or I would only want to use the contrast component of it, which by the way, I could do by using that luminosity mode that we looked at earlier in our ratio node. Now I'm only getting the contrast, but like that warming of the yellow patch that we talked about before, that's not happening because I'm not getting any of the color characteristics of this LUT. I'm only getting the contrast characteristics of this LUT. So lots of cool stuff inside of Resolve 18.5, but by far the coolest, in my opinion, is this contextual composite mode menu that's just been added and the creative implications of having this tool right there at our fingertips.